Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G. And this is a pretty expensive phone. It comes in at $1,399 for 128 gigabytes of storage and $1,599 for 512 gigabytes of storage. It only comes in two different colors. It comes in a cosmic gray and a cosmic black, and this is the cosmic gray color. I also got the Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus for free along with this LED back cover we'll take a look at later in the video. So let's go ahead and open this up and we'll talk about the specs and everything else. So let's go ahead and cut the tape on the back here. There we go. Set that aside and let's unbox this. The top's pretty loose and inside here, it looks like we've got our typical Samsung box set up. So here we have a box with a SIM card removal tool. Let's open the top here and see what we've got in here. No case or anything like that. And it just says this device is packaged with a screen protector. If you remove it and want to use a different screen protector, make sure it allows for use of the, all the touchscreen features. You've got a quick reference guide, Samsung care and your terms and conditions warranty pamphlet. So let me set that aside. Now here's the phone itself and we'll do a size comparison and everything else, but let me put this down. We'll see what's in the box and we'll come back to the phone. So we've just got a, a little cover here and then we have our 25 watt USB-C charger and so this is the charger it should charge pretty fast there's also a 45 watt charger available but tests online are showing that that really doesn't make much of a difference and it isn't really worth it so here we have this is our USB-C to USB-C cable that's included in the box and then we've got some AKG headphones. So these headphones seems like what they've been packaging with the Galaxy Z Flip. They're USB-C headphones. You've got some different size earbud tips there along with the earbuds themselves. So we'll set that aside. And one thing that they don't include with the S20 Ultra and they ask you when you buy one is do you want the adapter so that you can switch from a different phone? So inside here is the USB-A to USB-C adapter that allows you to switch to maybe, or switch from maybe an iPhone or a Pixel or something like that. So it's not included. They do include it for free though. You just have to specify that you want it. So let me set this aside and we'll take a closer look at the phone itself. Now the phone is made of aluminum. Let's take this cover off it here. And I'm not sure if there's stickers all the way around. I don't think there is this time. On the S10 there was. Now the phone has an aluminum frame with glass front and back. And it looks pretty good. And on the right side we have our power sleep wake button with our volume button. On the top we have a microphone. It looks like there might be a covering here that could be peeled off. Then we have our SIM card tray. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. On the left side of the phone, there's no buttons or no openings. And then on the bottom, we have a speaker, USB-C port, and then another microphone. We no longer have a headphone jack, so they've removed that. Now on the back, of course, we have our camera bump. This is a pretty large camera bump, but has some pretty impressive specs for the cameras. We'll cover those in just a moment, but let's first go over the specs of the device overall. Now inside the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G, which is a mouthful to say, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 with an Adreno 650 GPU. It's available with 12 gigabytes of RAM or 16 gigabytes of RAM if you have the 512 gigabyte of storage version. You can also add a micro SD card up to one terabyte through the SIM card slot. I'll show you in a little bit. It supports Wi-Fi 6 and then 5G, including millimeter wave and sub six. So that means it will be on T-Mobile in the United States or Verizon with millimeter wave in specific cities on specific street corners. Now the phone has Gorilla Glass 6 on it. It has a dynamic AMOLED 6.9 inch display, 3,200 by 1,440 pixels. It's got a 20 to nine ratio and it's 509 pixels per inch. It also has 120 Hertz smooth display and supports HD. HDR10+. 
It has an under the screen fingerprint sensor, just like the S 10 plus, and also has reverse wireless charging. Now, when we're talking about the specs of the front facing camera, it's a 40 megapixel camera that should be really impressive and also records in 4k. Now, when it comes to the cameras on the rear, we have a 108 megapixel optical image stabilized camera. We also have a 48 megapixel telephoto zoom camera. Then we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and then a 0.3 megapixel VGA time of flight camera. The cameras on this or the main camera can record up to 8k video at 24 frames per second. However, this year there is no dual aperture on the camera and there's no dual pixel autofocus. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Now it comes with Android 10 with one UI two. Now it also has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is huge. And then also supports fast wireless charging along with regular fast charging up to 45 Watts. Like I mentioned before, it also has IP 68 dust and water resistance. Now, before I turn on the S 20 ultra and set it up, let's go ahead and do a quick size comparison with the S 10 plus of last year. So these are the largest phones available, at least at launch from both years. So you'll see the S 20 ultra is a little bit taller. It is a little bit wider and it's also slightly thicker. It's definitely thicker with the camera bump as well. So there is a big difference there. And then if you were considering maybe the Z flip from this year, this will give you a quick size comparison as well. So here is the Z flip next to the S 20 ultra. And as far as the height of both of them, they're very similar, but the Z flip is a little bit taller. So this gives you an idea of overall size. Now, finally, if you're an iPhone user and maybe you're considering switching to an S 20 ultra, there's a size difference from the 11 pro max. So you'll see those side by side. And again, from the top, the S 20 plus is a giant phone. Now let's go ahead and turn it on. There we go. It says Samsung galaxy S 20 ultra 5g secured by Knox powered by Android. And there should be an update for this with the camera. Initially, there were some problems with the camera's autofocus. Supposedly, they'll be able to fix that with an update. We'll see though. Now, Samsung will walk you through audibly as well. So let's go ahead and go through this. Let's look at the terms and conditions. So you have to accept at least two of the terms and then hit next. Would be quite handy here. Choose a network. So we'll set up the network. Now, before I go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi network, one thing I noticed is it has a randomized Mac address, which is really nice because it's harder to track you that way with a randomized Mac. Usually a Mac address is assigned to the hardware itself and is not something that you can change normally. So it's going to check for some updates first. Now here's where you can copy apps and data from your existing phone. Now, normally I would do this, but you have to actually charge the phone up to about 80% in order to do that. So right now I'll just go to next, but I can come back to this later and then move my information over and it can be moved over from any phone that you have. So we'll go ahead and hit next. It says, do you want to use your old device next to an iPhone or iPad? We'll just go ahead and hit next for now. Now I hit don't copy. We'll wait for it to check info and then I'll have to sign in. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now I've signed in through Google. Now I need to set up either my fingerprint or face recognition. The face recognition on a Samsung device is 2d and not as secure. So I'll go ahead and set up my fingerprint. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. You'll need to make a pin or a pattern and then we'll scan our fingerprint and set it up. I tried to press a little bit quicker, but it wouldn't let me do that. I had a lot more problems with the S 10 plus than I am with this one. So it seems like this one may be improved. I know some people say it is others say it is not, but it looks like it's, it's actually improved some. So it's almost set up. It's nice and fast. And it says adding finishing touches. Log into a Samsung account to get the most out of your device. So I'll log into my Samsung account. Now I'm logged into my Samsung account. So I'll go ahead and hit finish. So I'll want to change those notification sounds to something a little bit more custom, but you can see here is the home screen. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the SIM card slot. I didn't take a look at this earlier and you can see it has room for not only your SIM card, but also a micro SD card up to one terabyte of storage. So you've got that and it's got a little rubber gasket around it, but this is plastic. So just be careful when you slide it back into place. 
and I'll put my SIM card in it a little bit later. Now this is the home screen and this should have 120 Hertz as far as the actual speed of the display. So it should be really smooth, but you actually have to turn on the fast speed. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, one of the things that's kind of interesting in the settings is this is a high resolution display, but it only shows at 1080p if you have motion smoothness on. So if you bump this up to 120 Hertz, you can have smoother scrolling but you also don't get the higher resolution. You get one or the other. So you'll see screen resolution is 2400 by 1080. If I switch to WQHD and hit apply, it says high refresh rate isn't supported in WQHD. So I would like to be able to do both. Although technically I would take the faster scrolling since you can't really see the pixels anyway and make everything nice and smooth. Now I did buy this directly from Samsung. So I thought we'd take a look at what apps are actually pre-installed. So we have our typical Google apps installed. We have some Microsoft apps installed. And then if we go into the app switcher, we've got some Sam Samsung apps and then also Facebook, but you can only disable this. This is pretty typical lately with Samsung. And it was the same last year as well. You can't uninstall it easily, but you can disable it. And then there's one other feature I thought was pretty neat. Now this thing is packed with features, but one other feature I thought was pretty interesting is if we go into the app switcher here and tap on the app at the top, we can keep it open for quick launching, meaning it will keep it open in memory in the background because this has so much memory, we can just keep it open. So that's a pretty interesting feature. Now let's take a look at the camera settings and then we'll take a look at the buds plus here. So let's go ahead and look at the camera. So we've got photo mode, video mode, of course, and let's see what we've got here. So we've got our different camera widths. So we've got wide, ultra wide, five X zoom. I don't know if it's going to be able to do, let's see if we can go to here. We can do 20 X zoom kind of interesting here that we have all of these options. So it's really interesting to see all of these different options. And then we've got different ratios. We can do 8K, which is just nuts on a smartphone. And then oh, let's go back in, let's spin the camera around and you'll see this is a 40 megapixel camera. Now I will turn off the smoothing since it does smooth your face. And like I said before, some people have had issues with autofocus, but I'll take a closer look at that when I'm using this. And let's see what we've got for our settings. So in here we have scene optimizer and all sorts of things, but rear video size, 7,680 by 4,320. That's pretty nuts for a smartphone. And then of course, front facing video, you have some different resolutions as well. So let's turn it on to 4k 60 for the forward facing camera. So that should be pretty interesting. I'll try all of these different features out. Now, if we swipe to the left, we have Samsung daily and we do still technically have Bixby. If you hold the home or the power sleep wake button. Now, one other thing before we take a look at the galaxy buds plus is we'll go to software update. See what we've got. We do have a new update. It's downloading and installing. So I'll take a look at that, but it says the device stability it has device stability improvements and bug fixes, new or enhanced features. So hopefully that's the fix for the camera and it's nice that it will be there. So it will also have, I think the March security patch, it looks like. So that came out yesterday. So it's nice to see Samsung keeping up with the security patches as well. So I'll let this install and then we'll take a look at the galaxy buds plus you'll see the phone has updated. It's on the March. March 1st, 2020 security patch. So that's good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at the galaxy buds plus we'll unbox these. And like I said, I got these free with the purchase. So it's nice that they were able to include those. And this should be a little bit nicer than last year's galaxy buds. They're noise canceling. And I picked the black color this year since I had the white ones from last year's. So this will allow you to charge these on the back of the phone. Let's see what this little pamphlet is here before we look at everything else. So you'll see it says quick start guide and then terms and conditions. I'll set these aside and inside here we have a couple more things. We get a cable so we can charge it. It's USB a to USB C and then you've got different size earbuds and bands on here as well. So that's pretty nice. All of those things are included. Now let's take a look at this. These should be a little bit nicer than last year. Like I said, they should have better sound. They have individual woofers and tweeters. So 
Let's go ahead and open this up and see if we can get this paired with this phone. So immediately it popped up, we'll hit connect, we'll hit allow, allow again, and right away it tells me the charge levels left and right, very different, and then I'll allow all the time and allow. So we've got Galaxy Buds, it's setting them up, and if you want to use your contacts and calendars and information through them, you need to allow these, otherwise you don't have to, and then we'll report diagnostic info to make it better. Now it says stay in touch with your surroundings, start Spotify from your earbuds, and we'll hit got it. So here's the earbuds, it says you're all set, and then you've got ambient sound, you can allow sound through just like you could before, or it can cancel the sound, and then you've got an equalizer here, notifications, touch pads, find my earbuds, and you even have software updates here. Apparently I have one. And so that's really nice. These should sound pretty good. This is what they look like. So if you haven't seen these, they charge inside and then they look pretty good. They do fit pretty comfortably. I've used the other ones. And so they should be pretty nice. Now, if you want to charge the Galaxy Buds Plus, you can do that by using wireless power share on the S20 Ultra. You can use other Galaxy phones as well. You just need to turn it on from your quick menu, your wireless power share, put it on the back. It vibrates to let you know it's charging and then the status light turns on. So it's a really nice feature just to have it. And then we'll hit cancel for that. Now let's take a quick look at the LED back cover as I was also able to get this free with them as well. So we'll take this off, open it up. And if you haven't seen one of these, this is pretty nice. It's not only a case, but it has LEDs in it. And this one is much nicer than last year's. This is a matte finish. So if you don't like the glossy back, and I'm not a big fan of it to be honest, Let's go ahead and remove this. You've got a quick start guide and that's it. Now the case itself, before we put it on, has a sort of a microfiber lining, but the rest of it is plastic, but it has LEDs that you can't see in the back. So let's go home on here, put the case on. It's nice and thin. There we go. It pops open the app when you first place it on and it says LED cover is attached. Open LED cover app and set the functions. We'll hit start. You have to agree to these. So now it's downloading content for the LED cover in the back. So we'll give it a moment. So now it applied a theme to the front of the phone. If we look at the back, let's see if we can take a look at that. We'll go into the, the cover and now we have different options. So on the back, we have different themes. So you've got themes, LED cover. So now that I have a theme applied, let me go ahead and set the phone down. It does have a screen protector on it and you'll see the LEDs come up on the back. Now, if you get a notification, these will, these will change, but they can do all sorts of different things for notifications and, and things like that. That's really all the back cover does. It's more for notifications, but it's a nice matte finish, makes the phone less slippery and I'll change the wallpaper and things too. Let me change it back here and we'll change it here. I actually like the stock wallpaper quite a bit, so we'll set it on lock screen, and let's set this one as well to the home screen. So now that should use the least amount of power since most of it is black pixels. We'll turn the screen off, turn it back on, and then they're moving. So we can get in nice and quick. So that's it for the S20 Ultra. I'll have to use it for a little while before I do any sort of review. And if you'd like to see anything specifically that I haven't mentioned already, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on the S20 wallpapers, I'll link one in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.